What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I thought this would be a fun video because as you guys know, I keep my STI on ethanol about 70% of the time. Well, actually 100% of the time it's always on ethanol. So I only get my ethanol from one place. I fill up the car and I fill up two of these VP racing five gallon containers with it. And I just keep them in here. So that way I have about 10 gallons on hand. And that generally lasts me about two weeks. But because I'm only buying my ethanol from one spot and there's really only one spot I can buy it around here, I've been curious what the eth actual ethanol content or percentages that I'm getting from that fuel station. Now, yes, I do have a flex fuel sensor in the car, so it will tell me the ethanol percentage going into the car, but I'm curious what the ethanol percentage is outside of the car, because inside the gas tank, I have different types of gas. I may have gasoline, I may have a different content of ethanol in there. So that way, when it goes up and hits the flex fuel sensor, the results are gonna be a little skewed from what I'd see up here. So just for baseline, I have about E72 in the car right now. It's about 72% ethanol, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's primarily just everything in these jugs right now. So I was curious and I went online. I went on Amazon actually. I found one of these. It's a E85 test kit. These are extremely easy to use. I will go over this with you guys in detail before we jump into using it. I will show you how to use this. And then I also want to talk about some of the pros and cons of uh, being able to test your own ethanol. Because I mean, if you're out in the Midwest, you have a lot more ethanol stations than we do up here in like the Pacific Northwest where we have like three or four in the entire state. So Let's get into it. Let's start talking about this small little tube. We'll talk about how to use it. It is extremely simple. And uh, we'll see what our E85 content actually is that I've been getting. Oh, right, you guys, so I've got a few things on the table up here. A, I have our ethanol test kit here. I also went ahead and I bought some syringes. I guess they're sterilized. I don't really need them to. I just wanted to have syringes to be able to suck up E85 and the water that we're gonna need to be able to fill this. But I do wanna talk about this because this is a little expensive for what it is. So it's essentially, move that out the way. It's essentially $15 for a small bottle with a sticker. So the way it works is you fill water up to the water fill line. You fill E85 gasoline line up to where it says to fill that. You shake it up, you let it sit for a couple minutes and then it'll tell us what our E85 percentage is. So I'm gonna run this test twice just to validate whatever results that we get. It's gonna be extremely easy. Let me grab some water so that way we can fill this up. We'll grab our E85 out of our VP racing container. We'll put it in a smaller container so that way we're actually able to suck it up and put it in here and uh, see what we are getting out of here. Now, just for reference, like I said, the STI does have an E72 blend in it right now, which is 72% ethanol. And the E85 that I have in this container that we're gonna be pulling from has sat for about three days. So that shouldn't skew our results terribly or at all because no moisture has really built up inside of that container. So it's not gonna dilute the ethanol at all. But let's start testing. All right, so as you can see on the table, I've got two cups. The purple one is full of water. The green one, I am about to fill up with ethanol. Once I get that filled up with ethanol, uh, we'll reevaluate camera position here, but hold up. Where's my dong? There's the dong. All right, so let's get the green cup filled up with ethanol. Oh, all right, well that clearly did not work how I wanted it to at all. Now it just smells like gas on the table. Noise. Noise. At least the bench looks really clean, I'll tell you that. This ethanol is very cold. Man, that did not go as planned. All right, let me put this cup on the ground and then fill it up so I'm not peeing this stuff everywhere. All right, so I now have our green cup full of ethanol and our purple cup full of water. Bust out a syringe. I'm gonna use two of them so that way we're not really cross-contaminating too much. All right, so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna fill up to the bottom blue line here with water. I'm just gonna pull it out with this syringe and then put it in here once it's full up to the water mark. We're gonna do the same thing with the E85 and put that up to its spot. We're then gonna shake up this tube right here. And after the tube has been shaken up, we will then let it sit, settle, and kind of separate out. Now, the reason that this works is because water hydrocarbon free, gasoline, hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons and gasoline don't like to mix, so they will separate out in here. So you'll kind of see the emulsion layers in here. It'll probably be water, it'll probably be gasoline, and then it'll be like ethanol, ethanol content or percentage, so that way we're actually able to see what it is. So let's pull some water out, get it filled up. And water is filled up. There's about 50 milliliters of water. Let's do the same thing with the E85. And you can instantaneously see the difference. Still got a little bit more to keep going. 
And we're now filled up with E85. Like I said, we're gonna run this test twice just to validate results. I'm gonna grab this guy here, shake it up, and uh, we will let it sit and do its emulsion. So we're gonna let that guy sit for probably about five, 10 minutes here, and uh, we'll see what our results come out to. So just as a side note here, you can see the emulsion starting to happen. So we'll let this keep going, but looks like we're getting some pretty good ethanol content in there. So the reaction in here is kind of calmed down and stopped. So what exactly happened in here is that the water and the ethanol mixed together. And on top, we pretty much just have a layer of hydrocarbons. So what does this actually tell us? Looking at this, we can see that the water and the ethanol have mixed together and leaves us at about an E83 blend, which is actually pretty good for what we're looking at. Not bad, super easy test kit to be able to do. Like I said, I do wanna run this test one more time just to validate and make sure. So let me dispose of this properly in an extra gas can I have laying around and we will run this test one more time. Once again, we'll fill it up with water, we'll fill it up with ethanol, we'll shake it up, we'll let it sit for about five, five minutes or so, let everything emulsify out into its layers and then uh, see what we get to validate our about E83 percentage for ethanol, which honestly, I'm happy with that. So to clean this guy out, I'm just gonna be using a small bit of acetone, pour it in there, shake it up, dispose of that, and then uh, we will rerun the test. So if you look, we are about done emulsifying and we are still at about that E84 to E83 percentage mark. Not bad overall. Let me bring the camera a little bit closer to show you guys this dividing line because it looks pretty neat. So as you guys can see right there, there is our dividing line. It is right under E85 percentage. So this is some pretty good ethanol that I would say, and I'm happy to keep using this. Now I wanna talk about why you would wanna do this and why you'd wanna see what your ethanol content actually comes out to before putting it into the car. So now that we've kind of seen how to use the test kit, I wanna talk about why it works exactly. So before I started making YouTube videos, I worked in chemical manufacturing and chemical engineering for a company that dealt with hydrocarbon spills for gasoline and diesels at fuel stations. Now the way this works is the water will bond with the ethanol, but the nonpolar bonds of the hydrocarbons will not actually bond with anything. So that way we can get that emulsion layer to see what is happening and see what our content actually comes out to. Now, why would you wanna do this at home or at your local fuel stations? So if you are running ethanol in your car, your ethanol sensor will see something different that we will actually see out of a traditional jerry can and reading the ethanol content that way. The reason this is is because we have different fuels that we're putting into the gas tank, maybe from different stations, maybe different types of fuels with an ethanol sensor specifically, and that's going to change our ethanol content that we're seeing in our ethanol sensors in our cars. Now, if you're running a car on straight ethanol, you're gonna want the best ethanol content that you can get. So a really good idea is to go around, maybe get two or three of these test kits, go around to multiple fuel stations in your area that sell ethanol. I know the Midwest is a big one for a lot of ethanol stations. Take samples from each of those over about a month period, maybe one a week, so that way you can see consistent results coming in from different trucks offloading their ethanol to the fuel station. Some fuel stations also don't really take care of their underground storage tanks, so you can get water and moisture that builds up in the tank then drips back down into the fuel, diluting your fuel even further. But for some older cars that only rely on ethanol and you don't have a flex sensor, then you are gonna wanna do this, so that way you can find the most reputable source for ethanol in your area. I've seen some people who go around on forums and do this and they'll share their results with other people, but it's a good idea to be able to do so. Honestly, for like 10, 15 bucks, I'm pretty happy with this little ethanol tester. You can use this time and time again. I wouldn't keep ethanol stored in this though. Ethanol is corrosive and over time it may start to eat through the plastic, um, even being diluted down like so. So when you are disposing of those, make sure you are disposing of them properly, maybe in a fuel can, maybe in a spare jug you have laying around that you will dispose of at a later point. I don't know how you're disposing of your fuel, just don't go pouring it out outside. But ethanol testing, it is a good idea and very crucial to your car's health to do, especially if you're running those ethanol tunes, just so that way you can get the most consistent, highest ethanol content you can get. But for me, being able to only get ethanol from one station and consistently getting about an E84 content mix out of it, 
I am pretty happy with that. I will continue to test through this one station that I get my ethanol from. Like I said, I get my ethanol from Joint Base Lewis McCord. It is the Army base up here near me. It's about a half hour away, so it's not too far. But I am gonna start doing random sampling through that fuel station just to make sure that our ethanol percentages are staying consistent. Because like I said, in the car, I'm seeing about an E72 mix. On the just the straight ethanol, I'm seeing about an E84 mix. But that's what I've got for you guys on this video today. So like I said, not a bad idea to keep some ethanol stored and use it when you need it. And it's also a good idea to test that ethanol whenever you can. And I will link below these E85 test kits and these Jerry cans, the VP Racing Fuel cans, um, if anyone does wanna swoop any of those up as well. But like I said, if you guys enjoy the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue. Like the STI behind me that you still can't see because the BRZ is broken and it's not going anywhere for, until I get parts in for it. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up, do it in one of these corners. Don't know which one I'm going to do it in quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!